Hi, Series Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain the fourth part of a science fiction drama television series called Under the Dome. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. It is now the ninth day since the dome's appearance. Joe, Nori, and Angie sleep in the barn to protect the smaller dome and the black egg. When they wake up the next morning, a caterpillar has magically appeared inside of it. They think the caterpillar will turn into a monarch butterfly, which all relates to the monarch that the dome told them about. They touch the dome again and see the fourth handprint on it. They assume it is someone who has gotten seizures like them. When the group is not around, Dodie comes to the barn and touches the dome. It electrocutes her, refusing to take her hand as the fourth print. The others find her unconscious and quickly bring her to the hospital. When she gains consciousness, she doesn't remember touching the dome and thinks she got zapped by the generator. Angie and the group do not correct her to keep the dome safe and hidden. Angie asks the town's nurse if someone has come to the hospital with seizures in the past couple of days. The nurse jokingly reminds her that Junior had a seizure in high school. This makes Angie realize that Junior is the next chosen one, not just because of the seizures but because of his mother's painting. Somewhere else, Barbie goes to Jim to talk about Max. Since she is trouble for both of them, they join hands to take her down. Jim starts by finding out where she has been living for the past week. While they are at the town's clerk investigating, Max arrives. She orders Jim to get her alcohol and shampoo, taking advantage of the secrets she knows about him. Jim has no way but to oblige. Then we see Julia go to the police station to meet Barbie, but she bumps into Linda instead. Linda has been looking around the late sheriff's office to find out more about the propane import. She finds a key in his hat that opens a safe deposit in the town's bank. The girls set off to find out the entire truth about the propane import. Meanwhile, Junior finds a thief who has just stolen salt from the convenience store. The scared guy reveals that he is taking it to trade in the cement factory. It turns out Max has used her connections to create a barter fight club inside the factory. She is using people's desperation to profit for herself. She brings Barbie to the factory and shows him around, revealing that he is the main show of the day. Barbie doesn't want to give in to her plot, but she threatens to tell Julia about her husband's death if he doesn't. In the end, he is made to fight a man who just lost his family to the dome. Most people bet on Barbie, but Max knows he will deliberately lose despite her. He does as expected, which wins her a lot of supplies. After the fight, Barbie has had enough of Max's blackmail. He believes telling Julia the truth is better than being a pawn. Max doesn't handle the rejection very well because she is also romantically interested in Barbie. While Max is distracted, Jim finds out about a property she owns on the outskirts of the town. He takes a boat to reach the house that is very well kept. The caretaker is a kind woman named Agatha who claims that the house belongs to a man named Oliver. She even offers Jim tea while he waits for Oliver to return home. When Jim is alone, he searches around the house and sees a picture of Agatha and Max together. Suddenly, the woman points a gun at him and reveals that she is Max's mother. She used to be a resident of Chester's Mill until she got pregnant at 16 and was ridiculed by everyone in the town. She had to move to the outskirts and start a new life which turned out good because Max became extremely successful. Still, she hates the people of the town for what they did to the teenager that she once used to be. Jim notices the way she is holding the gun and figures out she hasn't killed anyone in her life. He confidently walks towards her and gets a hold of the rifle himself. Then he ties her hand and puts her on the boat. As they make their way towards the other side of the town, Agatha accidentally falls into the water. Jim thinks of helping her but decides otherwise. She eventually drowns and dies. Meanwhile, Linda and Julia reach the bank which is filled with money that has no meaning to the people at this point. They find a letter inside the sheriff's deposit. In it, he reveals that his son died of an OD which is why he made it his mission to always save Chester's mill from dealers. For that, he, the mortician and Jim made the deal with the biggest illegal substance dealer in the state, Max. They provided her with the propane she needed to make the pills and in turn, she promised to never sell a single batch to the people of Chester's Mill. In the end, the sheriff did everything for the town even though it was illegal. 
Julia also opens up her husband's deposit, which shows that he has gotten himself insurance right before his disappearance. This would mean he was wanting to die so she could pay off his debts. She says she needs to talk to Barbie and rushes home. Somewhere else, Angie tells her brother and Nori about Junior's mother's painting. She doesn't think pink stars falling from the sky is just a coincidence. As they talk, Junior arrives and feels betrayed by Angie who brought strangers to his personal space. Joe attacks him, having found out about his sister's abduction. Angie stops both of them because they need each other to find out what exactly the dome wants. They convince Junior to come to the barn and test if he is the fourth hand that the dome requires. When it gets dark, Linda goes to Jim's house to ask him about his involvement in the propane business. He promises to tell her everything the next morning because he has had a long day. Barbie returns home to Julia waiting for him. She reveals that she knows Barbie killed her husband. Peter's missing handgun and the insurance papers clearly indicate he wanted Barbie to kill him so the debts would be paid. She doesn't blame Barbie and isn't mad at him because what he did was for self-defense. She has seen him put his life in danger for complete strangers and knows that he is not a bad person. Still, she asks him to stay away from her for a few days. Barbie appreciates the understanding and feels a lot lighter now that she knows the truth. Meanwhile, Angie and the group reach the barn to see the caterpillar has cocooned. They touch the dome all at once which makes the egg glow pink. Several stars form a constellation and fly around the barn, revealing that all four of the chosen ones have gathered. They stay in the barn till the next morning, looking at the constellations which are now drawn on the ceiling. There are four random dots apart from the constellation that resembles the four chosen ones. Still, the dome doesn't reveal the reason for its existence. Joe suggests they take Julia's help because she was the one who was told about the monarch. The others agree and send him to fetch her. When Angie and Junior are alone, he tries getting close to her again. Now that they are working together, he thinks Angie has forgiven him for keeping her captive. Angie makes it clear that nothing he does will make her forgive him. In a fit of rage, Junior refuses to be a part of the group and walks away. Right then, a massive storm forms in the sky that causes several destructions throughout the town. At the police station, Linda meets Jim and asks him about the propane. He finally comes clean and tells her about his involvement in the smuggling. Linda knows the right thing to do would be to arrest him but not in a situation like this. She understands they did it for the town and decides to let it go until the crisis is over. At Julia's house, someone knocks on the door. When she goes to open it, Max from the other side shoots her and runs away. It is her way of punishing Barbie for not obeying her. Barbie quickly comes downstairs and helps Julia. Right then, Joe comes to Julia's to see Barbie trying to keep her alive. He quickly gets them in a car and drives them to the hospital. Although on the way, they are interrupted because of the heavy storm. They make it to the hospital on time. Since the nurse is busy, Barbie has to take care of Julia himself. The thunderstorm causes the blocked radio signals to come through again. Dodie immediately tracks a frequency and hears the soldiers talking from outside. They confirm that Barbie is inside the dome and claim that he is the one they have been looking for. Dodie understands Barbie is not just an ordinary man. Junior is home alone when Angie bangs on his doors. She begs him to come back to the barn to help them. By now, the storm has turned into a spiral of clouds in the sky. As it grows stranger, Angie relates it to Junior's rejection. She thinks if he agrees to join the group again, it will stop. The two make their way to the barn which instantly stops the storm as Angie had predicted. At the same time, Barbie saves Julia's life even though she had already lost her heartbeat. A shocked Joe connects the dots and comes to a conclusion that Barbie is the monarch that the dome told them about. He runs back to the barn to tell the others about it. Then we see Max returning home when she discovers her mother's dead body by the waters. She cries mourning her death, but it is soon taken over by anger. She knows Jim is the one who killed her and makes it her mission to end his life. Barbie meets Jim outside the hospital. He is nervous about what Max might do after finding out about her mother's death. Hence, they decide to go to the cement factory and end her life once and for all. On reaching the place, Barbie does something to the generator as a backup plan. Then they go inside but see no one around. 
Suddenly, Max and her minion point their guns at the two and hold them hostage. Max is upset about her mother's death and will not spare either of them, but she makes the mistake of not killing them instantly. The generator suddenly stops working and the other two take over the guns. They bring Max outside and Barbie leaves Jim to do whatever he wants with them. As he is walking away, Jim shoots Max and the guy dead. Barbie is in shock and doesn't support Jim's decision. Jim in turn points the gun at him. When Linda arrives at the location, it seems like Barbie killed the others and is trying to kill Jim too. She tries to arrest him, but Barbie smacks her in the face and runs away. After that, Jim goes to the radio tower and is told about the message that Dodie heard from the military. He declares Barbie a criminal and accuses him of killing Peter, Max, her assistant, and Agatha. He is also accused of trying to murder Julia when the truth is far from it. The people of Chester's Mill are asked to report to the police as soon as they see him. Then we see the four chosen ones at the border of the dome. They touch the wall together and get the same vision. Jim is standing on the other side of the dome watching them. Suddenly, he starts bleeding from different parts of his body as if he was stabbed. When the four look down at their hands, they see bloodied knives. The vision troubles Junior the most and he runs to see his father. When he is not around, Angie tells the others that the dome wants them to kill Jim. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.